All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be doing the highly requested deadlift tutorial video. This is going to be a conventional deadlift tutorial. I will be doing a sumo deadlift tutorial in the future, but not today. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure of is that we have the proper shoe attire to deadlift. So you don't want to deadlift with a big chunky shoe because you're gonna be unbalanced. You're not gonna be able to properly produce force into the ground. And so yeah, that's basically that. So we're gonna to wanna to throw these away. You're either gonna to wanna to go online and buy some deadlift specific shoes like Sabo's Deadlift Pros, Notorious Lifts, One Hun Co. Or if you're not you know, a serious powerlifter, you can just get Vans or Converse or some flat shoe. I personally like to go barefoot. So a good rule of thumb I like to give people is have the bar placed about mid foot. I personally like to stand a bit closer just because my shins are not that long. At the end of the day, everyone has different anatomy. Your leverages are not gonna be the same as your friends, so you're gonna to have to figure out what works best for you. The next thing we are gonna be doing is figuring out how wide to place our feet. You know, you see a lot of conventional pullers sometimes, they will stand a bit wide, and I personally do not like that. I figured out that for me, I like to stand very close. A lot of people tell me, why do you stand so close? That's what I like, that's how I can be strongest. You're not gonna be doing the same thing as another person, like I just said. So guys, after we figured out how far to stand away from the bar and how wide to place our feet, we're gonna wanna figure out toe positioning. You're never gonna wanna have your toes pointed inwards because that doesn't make sense. Your knees are gonna be, you know, doesn't make sense. You also don't want to be pointing your toes out super wide because that also doesn't make sense to be in a conventional position and do that. Why wouldn't you just do sumo? So what I like to do is just slightly turn out my toes so that I can have my knees travel a bit diagonally towards the bar. That's what I like to do personally. Some people do straight, it's fine. It's a little less normal, but if it works for you, it works for you. All right guys, so now that we've figured out how far to stand away from the bar and how wide to place our feet, we are going to figure out how to properly brace. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you're not breathing into your chest. You're not, you know, and then going down because as soon as you pull, you're going to go like this and pull with your straight back. That's not what we want to do here. What we want to do is breathe big and deep into our diaphragm. Okay. Think of your stomach as a balloon. You want to fill that bad boy with air all around. So I'm going to take my brace. Now I have a big barrel, big balloon in my stomach, and we are going to go down. If you see any movement in your upper chest and your shoulders, stop, restart, take your brace again. You know, th this is me doing it without my pose. All in my stomach, nothing in my chest. All right guys, so after we take our big brace, there's two things I want you to remember. Reach down for the bar, Make sure your arms are straight, not bent, and think of them as basically being hooks at the end. You don't want to be flexing. You want them loose, and you want your hands to be hooks. Next thing is your head position. You don't want to be looking down. You don't want to be looking up. You want to be personally looking straight, having your eyes straight, and having your head up is innately going to keep your chest up. Also, as we are going down with the hooks, with our head and eyes facing forward, you're gonna wanna remember your knee travel, okay? So we are going to have our knees travel forward at the same time as we are reaching down. So this is what it looks like all put together. Another thing I want you to keep in mind too is when you're reaching down and you're having your knees travel forward, do not sit back. This is not a squat, okay? You're gonna wanna hinge down. So I personally like to keep my hips a little higher than most people. You can have them a little lower. This is just because I have long femurs. I like to keep them high. So I take my brace, stop here, have my knees travel forward as I'm going down and reach for the bar. You see, I'm still relatively straight. I do have a little more of upper back bending than most people as well. Like I've kept saying in this video, it all depends on your personal leverages. So once we are down here and grabbing the bar, 
there are gonna be two main ways to grab the bar once you go up in weight. You're not gonna be able to heavy deadlift just double overhand. It's not gonna happen, okay? So you are either gonna pull mixed grip, which is one hand under, one hand over. The underhand is going to be a little bit farther away from midline. So you're either gonna go like this, or we are going to use the technique that I personally like to use, which is hook grip. You wrap your thumb around the bar, you use these two fingers to hold your thumb, and you use these two to push up against the bar. A hook grip tutorial will be done in a later video, not today, I'm just gonna tell you what the grip is. All right, so all put together, it's gonna be, you know, knee travel, feet placement, feet width, toe positioning, taking your brace, reaching down with hook arms, keeping eyes and face forward, innately keeping chest high, going down, keeping hips high, knee travel forward, grabbing the bar, I'm using hook grip, and now that we're here, about to pull, you're gonna think of two things, okay? Three cues I like to give. So the three cues I like to give when pulling the bar up and actually performing the deadlift are pits to pockets. So what that looks like in action is when I grab the bar, look, when I think of shoving my armpits into my pockets, what happens? Boom, the bar comes up because I'm bringing my armpit down and back. What that is doing is activating your lats, okay? Your lats are what's gonna keep everything stable throughout this movement. So once I go down, reach for the bar, pits to pockets, we're gonna think of now, my second cue is leg press into the ground. So pits to pockets, leg press into the ground, bar is going up. Last cue is think of a string pulling you up on the back of your neck, okay? Not on the top of your head, because what that looks like is, boom, now I may be falling forward. If the string is pulling me up on the back of the neck, I'm gonna be going just slightly back. Not back enough to where I fall back. So that's what this looks like, you know? Hits the pockets, leg press into the ground, string on the back of the neck, boom, I'm done. And I can keep the same exact form with 135 up to, you know, mid sevens. I think of the same thing every time. So just uh, running it through again, proper shoe attire, walk up to the bar, see how far you're gonna stand away from the bar, see how wide you're gonna stand away from the bar, toe positioning, taking that good big brace, reaching down with hook arms, keeping head and eyes forward, knee travel, keeping hips high, choosing between mixed and hook, grabbing the bar, pits to pockets, leg press into the ground, string on the back of the neck, boom, we're done. And that, my friends, is how I like to conventional deadlift. I'm just passing on the wisdom that was passed on to me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Till next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Love y'all.